Hey y'all, my name is Aaron Carey and today I'm going to be talking about uh, the uh, GitLab plugin for NeoVim. Uh, usually I'm jumping on uh, sharing some of the progress and incubation entering, but recently I uh, had the opportunity to jump over to the editor extensions team on a bar request and I'm uh, going ahead and contributing some changes for a uh, GitLab plugin uh, for Vim. Um, so in this initial release, we were focusing on NeoVim, um, and it may stay that way for a while because I've myself and others that have sort of joined as Vim, heavy Vim users, not uh, NeoVim users, have just found the development experience really nice uh, for NeoVim plugins. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, installing the NeoVim plugin. Uh, I myself don't use a package manager for Vim. I usually just use uh, the pack add built in. Um, and I'll just show how to do that just through a simple git clone into the, the pack adds auto start directory. Um, I'll be showing off the uh, GitLab bootstrap code suggestions command, uh, which is a command that uh, we've built to enable the installation of the uh, the code suggestions language server uh, from GitLab. The actual, um, it, it will actually then also register the personal access token that's required to configure code suggestions, uh, as well as uh, having a status line support and just for showing whether a token uh, has successfully checked or not. Uh, one of the things the language server has is the ability to, to uh, check. And so Ash, uh, Ash McKenzie went ahead and added that ability in for the server. And so we uh, the Vim plugin uh, leverages that where uh, Ash went ahead and added in a status line, which tells you this, uh, the state of the token check command. Um, and off the back of that, I went ahead and added in the actual uh, Omni completion support, as well as auto commands for starting uh, starting code suggestions within Vim automatically, uh, given that the context is uh, correct for the user. Um, so we can, uh, and this is all this is all through uh, built-ins inside of NeoVim. So we're using the uh, the existing Omni uh, Omni completion pop-up menu. Um, you can bring your own uh, client and configuration for LSP if you want to, um, and then just point them at the language server. So the plugin is really modular, where you're able to enable and disable features as you need. And if there's anything you need to enable or disable, please uh, go ahead and be, uh, you, you feel free to contribute a change yourself and create a merge request, or uh, feel free to open an issue on the project so, uh, so we can look at making it more configurable to suit your uh, your particular use case with your plugin manager or with your uh, particular uh, LSP client status line, etc. cetera. Um, without a further ado, what I'll do is I will go ahead and I'll just rm-rf things right before a live demo um because i'm feeling pretty confident that things are going to work for me uh this time so if i go ahead and i use the git clone command to clone uh on my color scheme uh, i can use git clone to clone the editor extension in um we can see in this case it already exists what i would like to do then is i'm just gonna go ahead and delete that just for showing just to show how simple it is to install, uh, to install. So if I go ahead and use the git clone command, we can see that it's cloned. I now have a fresh installation of this. So if I go ahead and go to my intro, we can see that now I have to me. Um, now I have these different uh, GitLab commands available to me. If I try to edit a supported uh, language uh, such as Ruby. What we can see is we uh, get a warning saying, hey, this uh, this binary doesn't exist. So it's expecting to find a binary for the language server. Um, and we can see that there's a, it recommends running a different uh, command for bootstrapping code suggestions. And we can see that it says, hey, the personal access token check failed. So we're going to skip starting the language server. So if I go ahead and run uh, bootstrap code suggestions, we can see it, it goes through multiple steps. We can see that it goes ahead and downloads uh, the binary. Once it's downloaded the binary, it's set to executable. In the case of macOS, it'll make sure the quarantine bit is set to false. Uh, we can then see it boots, uh, shows that it's bootstrapped the uh, code suggestions language server. Um, so with that, we can see that it automatically provisioned the status line. We can see that uh, the GitLab code suggestions is set to enabled um, because we're running in Ruby. And so if we go ahead and open that for support of file type, we can now see that we can uh, get a suggestion. So the suggestions uh, work best on a file uh, that I find uh, whenever I'm editing files, we can see if we go ahead and use the uh, command X, you can see you get this and you get a different suggestions depending on the context you're in. And so if I was to say, uh, add capybara,
to add the capybara. And we can see here, it will automatically set the app host uh, for me. And if I go ahead and then accept that suggestion, we can see that uh, it has the differing capabilities. Uh, so again, because AI is non-deterministic and because I accidentally typoed, instead of accepting the code suggestion, you can just see that, uh, that AI is not gonna take our jobs immediately but we can see that there's quite a lot of capabilities if we're looking at things like uh, bootstrapping something. So if I define a uh, fizzbuzz function, uh, which takes a number, we should be able to see that I will go ahead and make a suggestion for how it can start that function. And then if I give that, we can see that it continues on. And now using AI, using the control X binding uh, through code suggestions in Vim, we can see that I've implemented uh, Fizzbuzz. Um, and so uh, that, that shows off Ruby and its supported language and how it looks. Um, we can see that I'm using control, uh, control X. We can see here that uh, once I accept that suggestion, we can see that uh, it will actually like suggest using the, the like using it as well. So if I create a test, for example, uh, using RSpec, I should be able to get some further suggestions for actually testing it. And we can see there that we have uh, it locked around it. And so that just provides a lot of stuff where you're able to clear up the boilerplates. And as a developer, you're able to say, hey, the AI is not quite perfect for getting me that suggestion, but the suggestion is super close. And uh, based on the context, the more context you give it, it just gets very good at creating this boilerplate code for you that you're able to modify and just speed up your workflow instead of having to write a lot of that, uh, the boilerplate or using snippets, which uh, may not, you have to sort of install all these snippets for different purposes. And using code suggestions, you're able to, able to quickly do it in your editor. And this is just from, without much uh, like additional configuration, um, which I think is pretty great. Um, and then in the case, if we want to go ahead then, and if we go to a unsupported files example, we can see that by default, unsupported files do not uh, start the code suggestion language server. So we can see if I just uh, open up Vim to clear my status line, we can see there that uh, this is not supported by default. If I then uh, do a check for the active clients, we can see there's no active clients now. But we have another command for code suggestions. So if we want to start code suggestions in this context and start the LSP, we can then do that. Now, when you're using different languages uh, that are not necessarily explicitly export, uh, supported by the code suggestions and the sort of engines that we're using along with that, um, you could get differing results. But this gives a really nice way to say, hey, I don't mind if it's not quite perfect on this language, but I would like to see what it looks like. We can see here that it, it gave me a perfectly uh, fine hello world example in, my, in this Lua file. Uh, off the back of that then, we can see that we've shown an unsupported language where by default it doesn't start up with a supported language. We get, it has a lot more context, so it's able to do, do a startup. And so if I go ahead and say import flask here, If I can remember my Python syntax to get it started, you can see that we uh, very quickly get a function there, which uh, defines things. So, so if I create def, I should be able to trigger it with an additional suggestion where it creates, uh, now I have the boilerplates for, hey, this is the root, this is the function. So if I define this about root, again, we should be able to see, if I now invoke the suggestions menu, we get that and it will auto complete it and add the lines in. And so that shows how you can uh, clear up a lot of boilerplates. I think it's uh, super handy. Um, and then if we define a main function, for example, we should be able to get a uh, trigger Python to give us the suggestion
where it's just that, hey, you want to run the app, I think. So um, that's it. just showing quickly like the usage of the plugin and how I'm uh, going ahead and I'm uh, using control X to modify the behavior a little bit or to trigger a suggestion. Uh, we're not, um, oh, I'm not, we're not doing inline suggestions as as you're typing yet. Um, that becomes pretty performance heavy uh, on the editor and that as a Vim user, you sort of notice that. Um, in the future iteration, in future iterations, we may have that as like opt-in functionality. I would love feedback around that um, and what what folks think. Um, again, as as we've seen, uh, when you're in a supported uh, language, it will uh, set the status bar to include the G, uh, G, GS, GCS uh, enabled. So if we want to disable that functionality, we can actually go ahead and then use the Lua, the Fluence Lua API to pass in the setup options. So if we set the uh, enabled false for the status bar, um, we then uh, tweak how that particular uh, functionality works. So we can see here now I'm in a Python file and we disabled that uh, but even though we've disabled that particular functionality, if we like define a new function in Python, it should be able to give me some boilerplate code around there. So we can see there's some boilerplate. It went ahead and it added a function that, uh, that renders templates and uses this parameter that I passed. And we can see that it, there's no need for the status line because of our modular uh, configuration. So just, uh, and then, yeah, going to my uh, notes uh, file again. We can see one of the things that I have is menu. So we can see that this is just using the built-in uh, Omni completion through complete opt. Um, you can figure it with whatever completion you want, as long as it's compatible with the built-in NeoVim uh, LSP client. And if you don't want to use the LSP, the built-in LSP client, you can go ahead and use whatever LSP client you want. You just need to be able to set up the language server as you want. This this plugin is just giving a lot of optional features where you can opt in and the default functionality you're setting up code suggestions and a lot of other functionality. Whereas you can also opt out of the, the functionalities you're not in, uh, particularly interested in. And then, uh, yeah, finally, you can go ahead and install the pack ad in summary. Once you've done that, you can run boot, uh, code suggestions to install the server and to find the auto commands per languages that are already supported. Um, for ones that aren't, you can, auto, you can run the other commands to actually go ahead and manually start it up and see if it works. In the case of Lua, you can see that Lua worked perfectly fine, even though it's not necessarily supported. We can see, uh, and then uh, finally, yeah, go ahead and download uh, GitLab.vim today. I would love uh, love to see feedback in this uh, feedback issue, which is number 22. Uh, for those that are local to Belfast, uh, happy Belfast Pride. And yeah, uh, really look forward to, to get dropping another update soon around additional functionality. Um, I'm super interested in seeing things like explain this vulnerability um, from a sort of like a developer perspective because uh, I don't love jumping out of my editor. So it, it, it's really seamless as we start pushing more and more of these modular functions into the plugin. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one.